The Save the Cat Story Guide is a deep dive into the three-act structure, which is composed of three acts and 15 plot beats. The first act has five story beats, and the first one is the opening image. The opening image is a screenshot of who your character is in media res and before your story happens. This is where you would put all of your hero's faults and flaws on display. If they are weak, insecure, bad with money, annoying, too trusting, or anything that can be considered a moral failing, this is where you would want to put it front and center. Additionally, you want to show how your character is in this world that you have created. For example, let's create a character. Our character's name is Jim. Jim is a weak guy who gets pushed around a lot by bullies and never stands up for himself. How could we show that? We could show him at school in gym class. A group of bullies come up to him and pick on him and push him around. Jim does nothing to prevent these guys from messing with him, but he thinks in his head, if I were bigger and stronger, I would beat the crap out of you guys. Our character is created, and we have an impression on what is wrong with him and what he can do to improve. This also gives us an idea on where our story is headed and creates an expectation in the reader's head. The opening image is also a mirror beat, which means that there is another story beat that is supposed to be a reflection of this one and vice versa. That story beat is the final image. So at the end of our story, our character, Jim, should be the exact opposite of who he was in the opening image. More on that when we get there. Some great examples of opening image in literature are Nick Carraway in The Great Gatsby, who starts the book excited to go to New York and join the Bond business, and by the end of the book can't stand New York and wants to go back home. Jamie Lannister in A Storm of Swords, who starts the book by laughing at a character for keeping their oaths, and by the end of the book is willing to defy his family to maintain an oath that he has made. And Percy Jackson in The Lightning Thief, who starts the book by wanting to selfishly abandon his school trip to go see his mom, and by the end of the book, leaves his mom behind for the greater good of humankind. In summary, your opening image is supposed to be a snapshot of everything that is wrong with your character. Then your story is going to be how you address those problems and how they grow through it. The second story beat of Act 1 is theme stated. This is the perfect time to talk about what your story is about. Stories, speaking in the most basic way possible, have two plot threads running through them. Your A story and your B story. Your A story is literally what is happening on the page. Your character goes to places, meets people, and does things. Your B story is the lesson that your character needs to learn, and this happens underneath the surface. Now, it might seem like the A story is the actual story, but the truth is that your B story is what is really important. Stories at their core are about transformation, taking a flawed character and turning them into something new and improved. With that in mind, the theme of your story should be stated within the first 10% of your story. So what does this look like? Let's return to Jim, our wimpy friend that doesn't stand up for himself. Let's say that he is fresh off an altercation with bullies. Multiple people stand around watching and he is embarrassed out of his mind. One of the people says to him, hey, you should stand up for yourself. Jim, in response to this, will say, no, it's really not that bad. Boom. As simple as that, our theme is stated. The entire purpose of the story of Jim is for him to learn how to stand up for himself, and we have planted that seed into the reader's head. This can be done in subtle ways and doesn't have to be screamed from the heavens. You can have a side character say it to your main character, or perhaps they witness other characters living out their theme. Really, however you present your theme is completely up to you, the writer. Also, one of the most important parts of the theme stated is that your character rejects the theme. There are two reasons for this. One, if the theme were presented to your character and they immediately listen to it, then there's no story to be told. They fix their problem and the reader is confused why they read a book that was 20 pages long. Two, it is much more realistic since humans are adverse to change and usually transform after going through experiences rather than being told to. So whatever your theme is, your character must deny it. My favorite example of theme stated comes from the John chapters of A Game of Thrones. For context, John's story is about learning what it means to be a man of the Night's Watch. He is discussing this with his uncle Benjen, who currently serves in the Night's Watch. John. I want to serve in the Night's Watch, uncle. Benjen. You don't know what you're asking, John. The Night's Watch is a sworn brotherhood. None of us will ever father sons. Our wife is duty. Our mistress is honor. John. A bastard can have honor, too. I am ready to swear your oath. Benjen. You are a boy of fourteen. Not a man, not yet. Until you have known a woman, you cannot understand what you'd be giving up. John, I don't care about that. 
In this scene, Benjamin is telling John, quite literally, that he doesn't know what it means to be a man of the Night's Watch, and John doesn't listen. And when John does join the Night's Watch, we do see that he doesn't understand what it means to join. So where do you think his story goes from here? In summary, you have introduced your character with the opening image and have revealed all of their flaws to the reader. Now you need to tell your character what they need to do to improve and then have them reject it. The third story beat in Act 1 is the setup. For those of you that have heard of the three-act structure before, this beat will sound familiar since the entirety of Act 1 is usually referred to by this name. If you were like me and looked at setup before, you more than likely thought, well, what does setup even mean? Setup is the opportunity for you to build your character's world around them. You get to show them in different scenarios and how their flaws affect them in said scenarios. This is also the perfect opportunity for you to introduce any other characters that are going to be important to the story later on, whether that be a love interest or a nemesis or even a comedic relief. Those characters would be referred to as A story characters. More on them later. The most important part of the setup is showing how the character's world is imperfect and that the reason it's so janked up is because of the flaws that you have introduced in the opening image. One of the main ways that you can do this is to show your character at home, work, and play. Let's go back to our friend Jim. Remember his flaws. He's wimpy and intimidated and never stands up for himself. This is our chance for us to show how that affects him in his day-to-day -day life. For instance, at work, he has a boss that doesn't respect him and is constantly giving him the worst jobs. Jim takes those jobs because he doesn't want to speak up. At home, Jim has neighbors that are way too loud, and he just endures it, even though it drives him crazy. And at play, Jim is interested in a girl named Carla, but he can never work up the nerve to go and talk to her because he doesn't have the confidence. Also, there's a boxing gym that is right down the street from his house that he thinks about attending, but just like with Carla, he can't work up the nerve to go there and try it out. These things in Jim's life that need fixing are, believe it or not, called things that need fixing. Your character should have a list of things in their lives that just suck, and the reason they suck is because of a flaw that your character has. As with Jim, his inability to stand up for himself doesn't just create problems with bullies, it also touches all different aspects of his life and actively makes it worse. Another thing that your setup needs to do is give a sense to the reader that if the character doesn't change, then they are doomed forever. This is called a stasis equals death moment. Going back to Jim, we could have him sit in his living room, looking at everything wrong with his life, and he becomes depressed. He imagines that he'll be bullied for the rest of his life. He'll never get a good job, and he'll never get a chance to date Carla. This scene needs to imbue a sense of inevitability to your character's change, so that when the story comes rushing in, it feels natural when your character makes their decision. More on that with our next story beat. A great example of setup in literature comes from Neil Gaiman's book, Neverwhere. Richard Mayhew, the hero of the story, is shown to be bored with his life. We are shown him at his job where he can't focus on anything that he's doing. We also see him with his girlfriend, who is overbearing and is interested in things that bore him, like walking through the museum. Meanwhile, while we're gaining insight into this character, we are also drip-fed information regarding the mythical London Below, which is a strange world that exists in the sewers of London. Richard's life is boring, and London Below is as unboring as you can imagine. Where do you think the story goes from here? In summary, your setup is going to be an expansion on your character's world, showing their flaws in different locations and scenarios. There also needs to be a sense of inevitability to your character's change, almost a feeling that if they spend one more day in this world, they will explode. The fourth story beat of Act 1 is the Catalyst. Other names that you might know this beat as is the inciting incident, the call to adventure, or the first plot point. So far with your character, you have introduced who they are as a person and the world that they exist in. This world that you have created is called the status quo world. This world is where your hero is comfortable, where their flaws can exist in a benign state and they can possibly stay for the rest of time. Now it is time for you to introduce something from outside of the status quo world to shake the very foundation that your character stands upon. Once again, let's talk about Jim. Jim's status quo world is one where he can remain meek and scared. What could we do to knock this world down completely? Let's introduce our antagonist, a man named Thomas. Thomas is a champion boxer who is tough as nails and doesn't take crap from anybody. He's also the biggest bully on the block, and when he sees Jim, there is no one that he would rather put his fist on. Thomas attacks Jim and whoops him. He whoops him bad. So bad, in fact, that Jim has to go to the hospital. 
This was the worst attack that he has ever received, and not only that, he just sat there and let it happen to him. Jim was fine with the bullying before, but now this is something that is too much to deal with. There's no way that he can remain in his status quo world and remain comfortable. And thus, we have our catalyst. Think of your status quo world as a building, and your catalyst is a giant wrecking ball that comes through and destroys it. Does that building still stand? Is it even recognizable? No, it isn't. And that is exactly what your catalyst should be for your character. An event that takes place that destroys everything. And if they don't adapt, then they will die, either literally or figuratively. Personally, I think the catalyst is one of the most fun parts of a story to write, because the crazier the event is, the better. You want your reader to look at this event and think to themselves, holy crap, where did that come from? Two great examples of catalyst in literature are The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Randall Thor lives on a boring farm where he tends to the sheep with his father, Tam. Then one night, a horde of beastly creatures called Trollocs attack his farm. Additionally, his father has a hair on Mark blade, which is a sword that only master swordsmen are allowed to carry. So not only is the farm and village where Rand is from destroyed, but the image he has of Tam is as well. Everything he knows has been flipped on his head. And A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Eddard Stark is going south to become Robert's Hand of the King, but he is also going to investigate a murder of which he suspects the Lannisters. Then, just before he sets out, his son Bran has been tossed from the top of a tower. Not only does he suspect the Lannisters of committing this heinous act, but now it has become so much more personal for him. In summary, so far in Act 1, you have built a character and a world. Now it is time to tear it all down with a single event. The fifth and final story beat of Act 1 is the debate. Another name this beat can go by is the preparation. The debate is a reactionary scene that takes place following the catalyst. A life-changing event has slammed into your main character. This is the time in your story for your character to say to themselves, well, now what do I do? Let's go back to Jim. He was recently beaten up by Thomas. He goes back to work and his boss gives him another terrible job to do. He does the job, but while he's doing it, he keeps thinking of Thomas. He looks down at the toilet he's scrubbing and he suddenly feels like he's still in the fight. He goes back home. His neighbor is being too loud and he suddenly feels like he's still in the fight. He checks his phone and he sees Carla's name in the contacts. He wants to text her, but he's too scared, and he feels like he's still in the fight. Jim reflects over everything that has happened to him and wonders what he can do to fix these things. He explores his options. He screams, he rages, he cries. Then after going over everything, he knows what he has to do. The debate is a multi-scene beat where your character gets to slow down and think over their problems. Just like in the setup, you can take them back to their home, work, and play to show them that their status quo world is ineffective for solving their issues. Remember that humans are adverse to change. A character isn't going to know the answer to their questions immediately. They're going to drag their feet. They're going to try to take the easy way out. And if this were the real world, then they might not try to change at all. But stories are about change. So your character must come to the conclusion that takes them in the right direction. My favorite literary example of the debate comes from The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Sauron's one ring to rule them all has been found, and if the Dark Lord gets his ring back, it would surely mean the destruction of Middle-earth. The ring is brought to Rivendell, where a great council is held. We hear multiple different points of views, opinions, and ideas on what should be done with the ring. Some say destroy it. Some say hide it. Others say that we should harness its power against the Dark Lord. Ultimately, they decide to march it into Mordor and destroy it. In summary, we have created a character and created a world and destroyed them both. Now we need to contemplate our next steps. Thanks for watching.